Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mission Endoscopy Training for Surgeons. Friends, flexible endoscopy training is essential for every surgeon in this era of minimal access surgery, you all know that. Here today, like the first class in your driving lesson, we are going to tell you the very basics for you to navigate through the upper GI tree using a gastroscopy by showing the basics what a postgraduates or a trainee should understand and also by means of two virtual live cases I am going to describe all the key steps of upper GI endoscopy. As you can see here every time when a pilot starts a plane he does what we call a cockpit drill like that before you do or embark on any endoscopic procedure please go ahead with two important rituals. The ritual number one is endoscopy checklist. See the scope is in good condition, it is working, the suction, irrigation everything is as for this list I have given it here and then you proceed. The next important thing of course is a patient checklist because though you are doing a procedure like a technician, but you have to remember we are all clinician. So, we should know why we are doing the procedure the indication like if it is a case of a GI bleed we know what are the pathology we might see. If it is a dysphagia what could be the cause for the dysphagia in this case like that we should have a background a clinical diagnosis before we embark on the endoscopy. Second important thing I would say more important is to verify there is no contraindication for doing the procedure because if it is a case of a severe epicastric pain in an elderly man it could be even a ischemic heart disease and inferior volume MI. So, if you suspect better you do like an ECG and trop T and get a cardiologist before rushing him for an endoscopy where things can go wrong. So, you have to be very careful where not to embark for an urgent endoscopy it should not be an act of desperation. The third important thing I would say is a drug history like for example, in a patient with diabetes, COPD, ischemic heart disease you have to evaluate the patient and put them in the ASA grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If anybody beyond 3 you have to be very careful think twice before doing endoscopy even then preferable to have an anesthetist with you. And also if they have a drugs like clopidogrel, aspirin you may have to stop 5 days before doing the procedure because any biopsy may endanger excessive bleeding. And the fourth important thing all of you I need not tell you the importance of what I call the informed consent as you can see in here in the patient's mother tongue explain why we do, how we do, what are the benefits and risks and alternatives explain them by giving them an information leaflet then you try to perform. The last two things are very important always educate your staff that they verify the patient has been fasting for at least 6 hours or more and they do not have any loose tooth or dentures. So, be a good clinician before you do an endoscopic procedure. There are some language I wanted to share with you what we usually treat see for example, you see a big screen here. So, you treat every screen you are going to see like a monitor like where is 3 o'clock 6 o'clock like that because if you treat the monitor like a clock and then whenever I describe a lesion you will be able to understand. For example, if you see an access channel where the biopsy forceps all the accessories come out in a olemposcope especially in upper G endoscopy it will be around 7 o'clock position as you can see here. For example, if it is in the pendex it will be somewhere at 5 o'clock position. So, you should know where the access channel and how it looks like in the monitor that is an x important thing. The second important thing is you have to have a good control for example, if I am using a right hand individual I will take the scope in my left hand and non dominant hand I will take a full control of my control head like this. Then as you can see I allot these two fingers for the buttons and I embrace the scope like this and my thumb is a key thing which will rotate the big wheel towards me as I rotate the scope the big wheel towards me I start looking upwards like 12 o'clock. For example, if the small wheel if I turn to away from me away from me I start seeing the right side. So, turning to the right is small wheel away 
and always looking up that is big wheel towards these are the two key movements you should really understand so all these things i am sure you will see in the live scope and the next important thing is you should be i am sure all of you are already a laparoscopic surgeon you know what i mean by ambidexterity you have to have a full control of your scope like here for example we are demonstrating you have the control head in your non dominant hand and also you are hand the right hand is holding the shaft like what i'm doing so if you just turn the shaft a clockwise you turn to the right if you turn it to the anti clockwise you turn to the left so this turning of this is done by not by the small wheel any longer it is mainly by the soft movement and that's why and more important thing especially when you go into the d1 to d2 you know how important to have a body movement so the wheel movement and the shaft movement and your body movement for example if i want to just to turn to the right like this then from d1 and to d2 i have to turn myself from looking at the patient to looking at the monitor here if it is present so this car screw movement is going to keep me stationary in d2 so all these things are important and also important as you can see in this picture try to pictureize this stage here all my staffs are here for example and see where i am standing with the patient in the left lateral position and see the number 1 2 3 4 everybody has a role to play for example here this is the key staff nurse as you can see number 1 she is going to hold the patient's mouth guard reassure the patient as the procedure is done this lady restraining nurse she is going to administer drugs if necessary and also keep the patient comfortable and the one behind me here is a very important assisting nurse she will help me with all the accessories and one here hiding here she will do all the recording so all are important and see how it is going to be held in a left lateral position very important thing is she is holding in the mouth guard and also with the other hand she is just supporting the occiput so the patient is not unnecessarily extending don't keep it a big pillow and also a pillow may not be necessary in a child but in adult you should have a small pillow like this and the mouth guard is not only patient is teeth is protected you are expensive the last 15 cm endoscopy is also protected the next important thing i would say is the safety of the patient while you are doing so always as i said the importance of checklist then always be a vigilant always even though i am looking at the monitor always keep an eye on the patient and i'll teach my staffs and we have a habit of always giving a nasal oxygen to the patient and also you need to have a pulse oximeter ideally an ecg lead in a ischemic heart disease patient keep the suction ready two suctions one for the endoscopy one for the oral suction for this patient so that patient is not full of froth and if there is a patient with a high risk patient or a patient with a foreign body or a child then you may have to have anesthetic stand by always you should have the resuscitation team and defibrillator ready for access so these are all the requirements for an ideal endoscopic procedure let me now take you to two procedures where i am going to tell you all the key steps to navigate esophagus stomach onto the d1 and d2 come back not to miss any lesions and safely perform a procedure let us go to the first case now so this is 45 year old male patient actually he came for the diagnostic endoscopic procedure the indication is a dyspepsia and ascites the core morbidity is chronic liver disease with the patient is a chronic alcoholic patient he is currently on beta blockers and proton pump inhibitors and diuretics he is having no allergy and no surgeries we are going to do the diagnostic endoscopy if you have a panoramic view of the endoscopy room endoscopy is essentially a team work and there are three important people here i i would say in addition to me of course one to keep the patient comfortable airway under control you need to have somebody vigilant if it is done in the outpatient setup you have a, a staff nurse who will monitor we have the luxury and uh, also we have our uh, anesthetist here dr thirumalai raja is here he is he going to give a conscious sedation next of course is the head end we have a staff to control the mouth guard and i have a assisting staff nurse surikala so all three of us are there and i have a monitor here and accordingly because they are all coming in what we call the tower principle in our country but ideally you need to adapt what we normally do our endoscopy or laparoscopy straight line principle i am standing as you can see the head 
I'm just having about 15 degrees away from the patient's head, about two feet away from him, comfortably holding the endoscopy, which is an Olympus GIF H170, 170 series, because it has the image enhancement and magnification also. It's a very good endoscopy. So I'll hold the control head with the non-dominant hand, engage my two fingers to the button, and allot my thumb to control the wheel, the most important wheel for the beginner is to the big wheel. All the movements you can accomplish by simple single movement that is big wheel towards you. That's all. If you don't want that amount, you can always make it away from you. It will correct itself. Otherwise, most of the turnings and movements are done with a big wheel towards me. That's the one thing you understand. The second important thing is soft clockwise rotation. And sometimes when we go into the duodenum, we'll tell later my little bit of body movement. So wheel, shaft and body is going to tell me where I am navigating. So let us go, quickly go, have some an idea overall, then we'll put it in small, small pieces for you to understand better. So the patient is anesthetized. I am putting it inside. As you can see, the first important thing is you look the monitor as a clock. So the six o'clock is what is have, seeing is a soft pellet. 12 o'clock is the upside down view of the tongue. You will be able to see that. And you will see the uvula, you may not appreciate, but what you can appreciate further is you can see the epiglottis, a glimpse of epiglottis. What is in front of the epiglottis is valicula. You are not interested. You have a glimpse of the vocal cords, arytenoid fold. That also you can very easily say, if you are treating like a clock, what is towards the 3 o'clock position in your monitor is the right vocal cord, right arytenoid fold, right pyriform fossa. This is the right pyriform fossa. This is left pyriform fossa. So you go to the left pyriform fossa and then just gently negotiate and with the encephalation, this is what we call a direct intubation and you will be able to enter the esophagus. The art of I mean, examining all depends upon how you control both the wheel and also the two buttons. So the superior button is suction. We don't use it that often unless there is some bleeding and fluid. The inferior button, if you place the hand like this, give your middle finger there and give your index finger for a superior. Okay, I'll just put a hand always. You see, my suction is not necessary, only the insufflation. So, you can't, so inferior button is important. I go and you can see the importance of torquing. You can always have a look here as we go. He is having in the esophagus momentarily small dilated veins which are grade on varices. As I said, our aim today is to teach you navigation. But there are pathologies here. This is called, there are at least four columns of dilated veins. They are between grade 1 to 2. Then, see, this is close to grade 2 or even 3 some video. And also there are some other telltale evidence to say they need further treatment. Okay. Then you enter the stomach. The stomach also, if you see here, there is a lot to learn. So you have a typical condition, this one. This is called congestive gastropathy. Okay. I can see, you can see it's like a skin of a crocodile or a snake. So that is another thing you are able to appreciate. But what we are interested is to, as soon as you go in, distant, the rugal folds disappear. You go, turn the scope, clockwise torque, big wheel towards me. You just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Then you will see the pylorus. Your aim is to bring the pylorus bang right on the center of the screen. So your scope, when it is straight, the, it is at the center. You will be able to enter and you will be knocking the door of a D1. This is the actually D1. What do you see in front and more towards the 9 o'clock is actually the anterior wall. What you don't see, which you want to see as a surgeon is a posterior wall. For that, the body movement is very important. I turn my body like, see, for example, here and also small wheel away from me. I will be able to see not only the posterior wall, but also I may be able to progress further into the D2. So that's another important thing you'll see. So what was featureless now becoming a horizontal valvulae conventis with a, again the clock position. If you carefully watch bile and also the ampulla, the only vertical fold on the medial wall, that is at 9 o'clock, is ampulla. Being an end viewing scope, you are not able to appreciate it as good as in a side viewing scope. But this is all. The end point of the endoscopy is growing, reaching up to the ampulla. Say hello to it. And as you do, then you come back. I am doing something which I will tell in the next module is shortening the scope. Then I will fall back in the stomach antrum. Then I will again the big wheel slightly to the 
uh, towards me. So I'll see a ridge-like structure stretching from around 8 o'clock to around 2 o'clock position. That is you call the incisor along the lesser curve. Then if I do full J maneuver or fully flux this and take the anti-clockwise and pull the scope, I look at, you can see the congestive gastropathy is very much and because he was retching a little bit, so there is a venous oozing. This repeated oozing is a cause for chronic anemia. So that is one thing. So we can reduce his portal pressure by giving him some beta blocker, but he has no fundal varices. That is the most important thing you have to understand. Then you again correct yourself. And the last thing is what we do is a distensibility test. I'll just suck all the air I encephalated and see the suction, all these rugal folds and veins, see it is collapsing right in front of you, suck all the fluid and start coming and start coming. As you come also, like in colonoscopy, withdrawal also sometimes show you all the lesions. Don't be in a hurry to take the scope, but always take time, especially the fluid in the fundus, but in a patient with the varices, you should be careful not to suck on the varices because then what was a sleeping tiger will wake up and it will start becoming ferocious and bleeding at this time is unwarranted okay so i'm just keep keep coming and you look at my right hand i'm actually uh, kissing the patient's mouth because when you have the hand right on the patient's mouth go your control on the soft is so good you can take it a millimeter at a time millimeter at a time so that otherwise what will happen patient is retching he'll vomit and also you have to instruct your staff nurse in case you are taking the hand from here to the shaft she will hold so she will do what you are doing so i'm just coming at the and you can always teach the staff what is the level you are in now for example you are exactly bang at 15 so we are right at the crico pharynx big wheel towards me again Whenever you have to see something, big wheel towards you. Remember that, that is well enough for this first module. Then you will be able to see the vocal cords again and you have a glimpse. Don't leave it for the ENT people to diagnose very, I mean, uh, the piriform fossa growth and the valicular growth, thing like that. Then you aspirate, aspirate, aspirate and uvula is seen like a polyp. Don't remove it. It is just a uvula at 6 o'clock position. And you haven't seen the teeth. That is the way you should do. Keep it at the center. Don't see the dental examination come out. That's all over. Thank you. Basically, is yes, currently on uh, proton pump inhibitors and antacids, no allergy, no previous surgeries. The previous uh, endoscopy is a duodenal obstruction, which was done three months back. Since this is a COVID era, we have done a COVID test for all the patients, mm -hmm. and it is negative for all the patients. Okay. Over to Dr. Isra Bhutti, sir. You see my stance again. Stand at ease. Hold it comfortably. Make a gentle curve with a big wheel towards you like this. So we are ready to go. So these are the three things. And we already know... Uh, what is doing each finger are allocated to control the buttons and wheels which we already know from our first module now i am going to place it just over the first is a surprise finding of having the upside down view of the thing because that is because of the configuration okay so as you go in I'll go into the first crack eye region. As I said, I'll be going. This is an anxious patient and I'll be the shortest time where I wanted to spend. So I, I'm not going to dwell into what we have already done before. Here, what I'm going to do is as soon as you reach the OG junction, for example, this is the gastroesophageal junction. Okay. There you just, if you have the luxury of narrow band imaging, this is esophagus in MBI. And the transition you will be able to appreciate very well here at the bottom at least at 6 o'clock. So, scoma colma. Any Barrett's extension you will be able to appreciate. So, that is additional advantage of having a, a high end, uh, high definition endoscopy. Then I will just go to the white light because that is what we wanted to do. As you go inside, if you walk towards 3 o'clock, you go dive into the and I mean the body onto the antrum as you can see down further in the darkness you see the antrum taking a right turn okay towards three o'clock so what you should not do is you should not go towards the nine o'clock if you go nine o'clock then you will be entering and spending all the time getting lost in the roomy stomach is a problem for the beginner how to avoid that you have three things I am going to tell you repeat for your life. What are the three things? As soon as you go, if there are any fluid, you suck of course. Distend the stomach enough to have a comfortable patient. Then push the scope, number one. Turn the scope clockwise, number two. And big wheel slightly towards you. 
and if you have a beautiful view of the stomach what do you see on the floor that is 6 o'clock is the greater curvature what do you see on the roof is the lesser curvature what do you see at 9 o'clock there is the uh, anterior wall can you press on the anterior wall okay. you press one my answer is pressing press relax press see that is the anterior wall posterior wall if you have a pancreatic cyst or something that will be coming so you know orientation walk along the greater curve then what do you do as you go further and further i'm doing a little torquing to the right and also big wheel towards me towards me so when i turn the big wheel towards i push the pylorus is coming towards me and try to put it at the center and i am turn taking all my things in the wheel so that it is straight the scope is looking straight like this so end view end facing pylorus right at the center very center then you will be able to enter you can see here there is some small changes here on the scarring and also a duodenal erosions then i turn the small wheel away and then big wheel like this then i go further in there was no obstruction now as you can see is all healed there is a minimal scarring only you can appreciate i can go right into the second part and i what i have done just now is shortening the scope then after that i am just going to hold the scope very close as i said whenever i want to have a better control see this is actually right to the ampulla you can see the ampulla waiter uh, slightly you have a glimpse of that at 9 o'clock position and then slowly come back the shortest route and you can see the villi how easily the villi is seen i'll show in one case by just underwater examination the importance of seeing and also taking a biopsy especially if you see a case of a chronic diarrhea okay now you fall back so what do you see here is actually deformed you can see the duodenum is deformed that's all i can tell you but it is not any more stenosed and it taking a acute right turn like this but there was not like this is the exact place where she had a stenosis now it is easy to go in your stroke scope diameter is 9.2 i'm sure it is 10 to 12 mm diameter is good enough for her to have near normal diet now i am falling back here i'm going to do a clot test now so clot test what i am doing is for demonstration and also to make sure this patient after h pylori eradication she had a close what is its positivity so usually you have a response of about 80 to 85 percent in my experience we give 14 days of this drugs you advocate then so for people to go see the trajectory is at seven o'clock okay you have only this amount that is only one centimeter beyond the metal portion should be ready and you and your staff nurse should speak the same language she has to listen only to my command she should not do herself anything open close so it is open close then lift okay then you snap then you take but keep the view of the biopsy always and i am not seeing her i am just did that believing that whatever i am doing she is responding so she will take it if you take the camera to what they are trying to do there for a moment and i have sendel from shali he is going to supply all this uh, accessories today with the clot test and also all these dilators and whatever we need and he is going to place that little piece of antral tissue onto a slide put a small drops of saline keep it for about a minute or so and what is an yellow disc there as you can see it will turn into pink that pink is positive that is the very quickest way of seeing whether the patient has a urease enzyme even present if it is second time positive whatever drug you have given didn't work or she didn't take so you need to do further test even consider doing culture and all those things so that's about the very simple rapid urease test we have done it we'll go back to the interior the bleeding is stopped that is expected bleeding then i look quickly at the incisura here this is a peristalsis this is incisura incisura is a constant landmark commonest site of benign gastric ulcer along the lesser curve stretching between 8 to 2 and do a big i mean big will towards you do a j maneuver anti clockwise the thing you should not do is turn this way say this is an awkward movement you have a wrist strain you don't do that you do this movement it is good for your morning dance and also body movement so this is a movement we advocate in other words this has to the wheel should be on your right and all the buttons should be front this should not be done this way this is the 
think sometimes people inculcate these types of habit from the uh, seniors but i would resist doing that you keep it always like this and you even 100 cases you do you not have any wrist strain so you do this clockwise anti clockwise pull the scope and see the fundus and the fluid is there and also you can have a cardiac pulsation there okay then close to that is the cardia what is hugging is the cardia what is very close to the scope is a lesser curve what is away from here is a greater curve so you should not describe if you see a lesion how far close to the lesser curve along the lesser curve how close it is to the og junction all these things you see the last thing you do is a deflate then you come out deflate and depart that's what i say you deflate then you come out otherwise patient will go and burp outside so i just deflate so distensibility linitis plastica can be excluded in some people by just seeing how elastic the stomach then come back see the og junction and have a good look see back again my hand here i am hugging the scope in such a way i have a full control the patient is not vomiting the scope i am taking the scope millimeter at a time hope you had few tips and tricks for the upper ge endoscopy in this one but friends please prepare to abandon the procedure if the patient is restless or not very cooperative or in any case of cardio respiratory issues and also if there is any such suggestion of complications like perforation false passage or even a aspiration please abandon the procedure immediately take the scope out and the, call the resuscitation to very very important thing and once you have successfully completed the procedure it is not over there you need to have a detailed report like what we have given here this one so you need to have a software where you can record all the findings and you see standard definitions and all the internationally accepted terminologies to describe the lesions have some pictures annotated and give it to the patient or the relatives and give the detailed diagnosis and treatment plan and also tell them especially when they are sedated not to have any solid food for 30 minutes not to drive for the next 24 hours all these instructions have to be given and also a contact number to contact you in case of any difficulty so ladies and gentlemen as i just said this is just a beginning of your journey to perfect the art of endoscopy so endoscopy ritual is very very important before you embark on any basic diagnostic endoscopy both the endoscopy checklist and patient checklist second thing is during the procedure ensure all the safety precautions are observed with a pulse oximeter ecg and administer nasal oxygen and endoscopic steps as i said it is just you are today you are learning the technical skills i'm sure the cognitive skills of interpreting the results and also for all the pathologies everything is going to be in the subsequent classes you will learn because here the training or a success anything is just a journey it is not a destination because i am sure you also will accept if i say the endoscopy is a future and there is no scope without a scope thank you very much enjoy the day